the doctor asked me, are you fighting with lion? <laughs> Why do you get this uh, in your cheeks? Are you fighting with lion? I said, oh, that is a travel mark. Africa. Africa is the world's second largest continent with 54 independent countries. It boasts a vibrant, rich and diverse culture. There are about 3,000 tribes on the continent who practice various indigenous forms of what is widely known today as body modification. Hello besties and welcome to another video on African history, perception and culture. This video has been a collaboration with the channel Civics Africa on the subject of body modification in Africa, attempting to explore the roots of this fading indigenous practice. If you are still watching till this point, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more. In layman's term, body modification are the changes made to the human body by inflicting permanent or temporary condition for reasons such as beauty, folk medicine, aesthetics, and tradition. In various parts of Africa, body modification has different native names. So you can imagine that with about 3,000 unique tribes, how diverse this subject truly is. It is a century-old practice done by indigenous African people who use methods such as scarification, tattooing, branding, painting, and burning to create physical identifiable features on the human body you might want to know why our ancestors did it. Well, for the fact that in ancient African civilization, body markings have been used to mark social, political, spiritual positions of an individual or group in a manner that is immediately visible to the naked eye. I'm proud of it because Anywhere I go and I see my family, I know that. What, uh, what side have you come from? That is it. Our people use the body as a canvas, creating a wide array of changes that are perceived as art. In some African tribes, scarification and tattooing serve as cultural imprints, maps, messages, for example, in the ancient African civilization, if you were to come across a certain tribe marked in a certain way, you would know if you were to be welcomed or not. This does not take away from the fact that there has been controversy surrounding this topic. It actually has become a highly subjective matter. What one finds acceptable in their culture may mean something completely different in the opposite. For example, African model Monet's is turning heads and changing the narrative of this old age practice, which was once considered as evil. She is now gracing the runaway, proudly embodying her African marks, and this is what she has to say. I was born in France, uh, but my roots are from the Republic of Benin, West Africa. My mom has scars, like they're actually tribal scars on her temple, and in my dad's family they have it on their cheek. Um, the way my ancestors used to identify themselves is, is such a bold and brave uh, uh, choice. Some early recorded forms of body modifications on the continent were widely captured around the 19th century, supposedly around the time when the Western nations 
began the scramble into Africa. However, we as African people are very much aware that this practice existed way before that time. According to oral history and folklore, the earliest known history of body markings in Africa dates back to around the 19,000 BC near the peak of ancient Egyptian civilization. A form of a tattoo was discovered on the skin of mummified corpses of men and women. I'm proud of it. My father had it, my mother had it. But if I go anywhere, people will identify me with this. You Africa, you Nigeria, they will ask me because they quickly see this. In recent days, its roots can be traced back all over Africa. For example, the iconic Himba woman from Namibia apply what is known as tribal makeup made from red ochre, animal butter and aromatic herb. It gives them a red hue similar to that of the Samburu woman found in Kenya. Slim and slender might be an in thing in some countries, but in the great Omo Valley of Ethiopia lives the body people and this side of the world, bigger is definitely better. Young men take part in an annual contest which takes six months to prepare. They spend their days consuming a concoction of milk and cow's blood in a bid to be crowned the Chabia man. The winner is considered a hero for the rest of his life and gets to marry the finest maiden in the land. Just like the Himba and Samburu people, the Suri tribe in Ethiopia cover their bodies with red ochre, often when going on hunting trips for traditional use, military, and it also functions as a social marker distinguishing boys from girls as well as men from women. Another example is the Zulu tribe of South Africa who practice indigenous scarification. A small incision is made into the skin, then ash and herbs are rubbed on it, leaving the skin irritated, which eventually heals, leaving a raised skull. It is considered appealing to touch and look at, and for the most part, young women were secretly fascinated and aroused by this look. It also demonstrated as bravery and ethnic pride. Fishbone patterns and imitations of crocodile skin can be observed in the Tanzanian Bonde and Bobo tribe in Burkina Faso. The crocodile is considered as a sacred animal amongst these people. In some parts of Kenya and Tanzania, Maasai communities create secular and semi-secular hunter or warrior scars on their cheek, which serves as tribal identification marker and also a desire to be a successful hunter. So anywhere we go, that you see these three cross like this, you know that yes, it's from my family. Typical for the Bantu Tonga tribes in Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, Long keloid scars reaching from one eyebrow to the other is made to achieve an appearance of a buffalo, which demonstrates an act of decisiveness. The reasons why we are doing this, my own three three, uh -huh. that is for our family. If you get lost, we can find have a way of retracing or getting ourselves back. That's one of the that's an essence of tribal marks. Scarification is a cultural custom in many indigenous societies in sub-Saharan Africa. 
and in my own country for example it is not only the himba that engage in this practice some oshiwambo tribes especially the kwambis mark two lines on both of their cheeks as tribal identification markings these markings were similar to those of the pokot woman in kenya these marks were ornamental and made women more attractive to men. There is a widely divided belief that the Kwambis create these scars in order to treat eye conditions. In addition, the Kwanyama, Kavango and Kaprivi tribes engage in scarification practice for traditional healing practices. Uh, we also have the Kukuyu women in Kenya who use body markings to show the different stages in their life from puberty to marriage. Despite the pressure of modern world, some of our people refuse to give up on this way of life, citing... I'm not going to exchange this one for a clean uh, chick <laughs> like yours. Uh, this is me and this is a self-expression of what's happening inside me and this is a representation of who I see myself and where I'm standing with myself. Notably, body modification has become increasingly frequent in the Western countries. More and more people are modifying their bodies for cosmetic reasons. Sadly, the terror and stigma associated with this practice is still prominent across the board. People ask me questions when I go in buses and train. And people will come closer and say, what is this in your face? They will ask me questions, I will tell them. They may say, we, I fought with hyena, I fought with lion. And there was no window in, my, in our room, so you look for your way with your finger. And people scratch your faces, your face, and you scratch their faces. But I used to tell the people the truth. It's my tribal marks. Indigenous African body marks are somewhat facing a near revolutionary extinction. But it is now the older African generation that still remembers how it was once celebrated. Back in the days, indigenous African body modification practices were more of a choice. Parents will often consent and those who were old enough to take part would do it if they wanted to. We cannot take away from the fact that there is, however, other forms of body modifications that are considered extreme to an extent that they are believed to violate the fundamental human value and dignity. Many attribute this to the implementation of regulation prompted by the increase in health implication and safety guidelines. Young men and women are now deciding if they want to or not. There is still many African tribes who modify their bodies in one way or the other. So, so are you African? Do you have any scars on your body? Do you want to share what was the experience like for you? Why did you get it? If you've made it this far into this video, it probably tells me that you are interested in this type of content. And if you do, be sure to subscribe and like this video. And also, don't forget to check out Cervix Africa's version. You can find the link in the description of this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye besties!